Hey everybody, I'm Joey and today I'm back with another bite-sized cooking tip. Today, we're gonna talk about the porterhouse steak. Now, there's a little bit of confusion around this cut, so follow me and let's break it down. So as I mentioned today, we're gonna to talk about porterhouse steaks. Look, there's a lot of confusion around this cut, especially from people who are just getting started cooking meat. This right here is the porterhouse. And as you'll see, it has a T-shaped bone that runs across the top and down through the middle. Now, if that sounds familiar, it's because its cousin, the T-bone steak, is very similar. I'll get into some of those distinctions here in a moment. But as you'll see, you'll have this long, narrow steak on one side of the bone, and over here you'll have a much smaller piece of steak. Now, each side of this bone is sold and marketed as different steaks under different names other than the porterhouse. So let's get into that. And that's exactly why I have three steaks right in front of me. So kind of going back to this T-bone, what we have right over here is a strip steak. That will often be cut away from this bone and sold separately. As a matter of fact, that's what you're gonna see right here. I have a strip steak which has been trimmed. There is, it's totally boneless, and you'll see exactly how they look very similar. You have the fat cap going around the exterior of both steaks. They're both long and narrow. All right, so the strip steak can be a little confusing. Why? Because it's sold under various names. Here in the US, it's commonly referred to as the New York strip steak, but I've seen it marketed under a couple other different names as well. It's a little confusing, but it, here it is, a strip steak. Now, right over here, you have the filet portion. Now, this is typically sold separately uh, and labeled as filet mignon, often one of the most expensive cuts in any steakhouse. So let's take a little bit closer look at that right here. There's the filet portion. This is a filet I've hand trimmed myself. Now, the other thing that you're probably noticing is some real size differences between Oh, the circumference of this steak versus this one over here. Well, that's because of where it's cut. This is actually this portion where this porterhouse and T-bone steak is cut from uh, the smaller end of the tenderloin. So this is always gonna be a little bit smaller, but I think that's a great place to transition to the difference between a porterhouse and a T-bone. Look, a porterhouse and a T-bone, they're exactly the same. The only distinction is that on a T-bone steak, you won't see a filet portion this big. It will often be a little bit smaller. It's a little bit ambiguous about the line of where's a T-bone end and a porterhouse begin. But generally speaking, that porterhouse is gonna have a much larger filet portion. Now, let's get these side by side, right? Here we go. The only thing missing right now is the bone. So this side over here has more fat and that's where beef gets its flavor. So you really want a little bit more fat in your steak. It's not gonna be as tender as this, which unsurprisingly comes from a cut called the tenderloin. That's, we break down that tenderloin and we get it into filet mignons. Look, that's a much leaner steak. It has much less fat running throughout it, but it's gonna be a really tender steak. And what this porterhouse does right here is it really offers you the best of both worlds. The strip steak over here and the tenderloin over here. Now, another challenge to cooking this steak is that this tenderloin is often gonna cook a little bit faster than this strip. So you'll wanna kind of balance that out as you cook them over fire, uh, especially on the grill. A cast iron skillet is a little bit more forgiving end to end because it doesn't have uh, well, all the hot zones and the flare ups that you can have on your grill. So again, porterhouse steak is just a combination of the filet right here and the strip steak right here. It has a bone running through it and the T-bone is the exact same cut, only it has just a slightly smaller tenderloin. All right, so we hope you learned something today. Look, if you've been around the grill for years as I have and many of you have, you've probably already figured this out, but this is a very common question that newbies ask me all the time. So I just wanted to take a moment and address it. Look, and if you like this video, you know the drill. Go ahead and hit that big thumbs up like button or even better, subscribe to our channel so you'll never miss a beat. We release a new video every single week. Also, while you're down there, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. What cut of meat did you struggle with learning when you first got started? Now, um, we're gonna go ahead and get these steaks seasoned up and on the grill for another video. We look forward to sharing with you. Stay tuned as we continue to cook meat made easy. I'll see you next time.